Father. So I'm going to speak to you today on by his stripes we are healed. We were healed. By his stripes we were healed. And I pray that this this uh, message really touches your hearts today, friends, because, you know, um, we've got to understand the, the truthfulness, the faithfulness of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Um, I really believe that this message is going to change the way you think as well. It's important that, friends, as we think, so are we. And it's not just that you come up here and be prayed for, but understand that there is a foundation in the word to receiving as well. Many times Jesus had gone up to people and said, do you believe that I can do this? So he was looking <clears throat> for their faith, okay? He was looking for their faith. Not only did Jesus have the faith, of course he did, to pray over people, but he was looking to see if they had faith to receive. Even in the book of Acts, it says, um, I could see that he had faith to receive. So faith is a very important part of receiving from the Lord. In fact, in Hebrews 11, verses 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's why when you come up and you say, oh, well, I still feel this, or this is still happening, you, you know, you need to understand the principles of faith to receive from the Lord because you don't walk by sight, but you're walking by faith in his word. Okay, so we need to believe the word. We need to begin to declare it and act upon it for it to really become a reality in our lives. And I can assure you that when you begin to pray for people, you, you will see things start to happen in such an amazing way, uh, you know, because the word is now becoming rooted in your heart, that no matter what is going on in the world, you just know that God's word said it, and that settles it. You know, some people say God's word uh, says it. I believe it. That settles it. doesn't matter whether you're a believer or not. God's word said it, and that settles it. That is the most important part, friends. So we have a choice, you know, as to whether we're going to believe it in our hearts. And that's what the Lord is looking for today, our hearts, friends. Um, so it's important to realize that there is a, a relationship that we need to develop in the Lord. That is all he wants from us, friends, is our hearts in receiving. Do you know that healing starts in your heart? Okay, very important to realize that. Okay, so, you know, but many are conformed to the world, but they're not renewed to the word of God. And this is what the Lord wants us to do so that we can all begin to flow, you know, in such an amazing anointing. This is what God has intended for each and every one as believers. But the Bible even says that he diligently rewards them that seek him. So there's a challenge, friends, to begin to seek him like never before with all of your heart, okay? All right, and God's word doesn't lie. You know, some people say, well, I, I did seek the Lord, but God's word doesn't lie. You know, he says, with all of your heart, you will find me if you seek me with all of your heart. So um, it's all about the heart, friends. Um, you know, quite a challenge to many today, you know, because you're looking to the natural. Perhaps you've got a sickness and you're wondering if you'll ever get over it. You know, as we said before, but all things are possible with God. And he's looking here today. He's not looking at the sickness that you are carrying today. He cannot look on that. God can only look on light, okay? And he sees you in the light, okay? We need to walk with him. Walking with the Lord is very important. As we walk with the Lord, we are in his word, okay? And not only are we in his word, but we're developing a prayer life. Your prayer life will fuel the anointing okay, that is within you. And it's not a two-minute prayer in the morning or 
a reading. You know, some people get very religious. Every morning they read the Bible, and that's it for the rest of the day. But God is wanting to walk with you constantly, constantly in his word. Okay, so, you know, this is the challenge that, that we do face in the world today. Um, you know, because many want to go by what the world is saying and not by what God's word says. Okay, so we need to be in harmony with the word of God. You know, anybody can preach the word of God, but not everyone can demonstrate it in the spirit. Okay, but that now happens through faith. That happens because you are walking in the Lord. Okay, and it's never too late, and it really doesn't matter what life you have lived before. When you come to the Lord, you repent and you make a complete change. You don't go back to those ways. Okay, so we need to get into perfect harmony with the word uh, because when you think about it, Jesus has actually done everything for us. You know, I think of that scripture, uh, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed, okay? At that very time that Jesus was crucified on the cross, he did it all for us. He was there, he said, it is finished. He forgave the, the, you know, the people next to him. Uh, Whatever they had done, he had forgiven them and uh, praised the Lord, Forgiveness brings healing, okay, in our lives. And uh, this is what we need to do. And so often we find that, um, you know, although healing is settled in heaven, it's not settled in our hearts. You know, friends, what is very interesting is when I meet people, I like to hear what is on their hearts. And so often it's negative. It's extremely negative. It's, I've got this problem, I've got that problem. They're claiming it because they say they've got it. Okay, all right. But I don't hear, you know, I've been suffering from this problem or that pain, but Jesus is going to heal me today. I hear nothing of Jesus, and it grieves me to hear that that people are, are coming with their problems but they're not talking about Jesus, who is the ultimate, who is the only, who is the healer that is going to bring about that healing in your life. And often I say to them, do you know Jesus? And they look at me like I'm crazy because they're not confessing Jesus. They're confessing Satan. They're not confessing Jesus. You see, the devil wants you to confess your sickness. He will love it if you will just continue. You can even hear it later on in the deliverances. He'll love it if you just continue to speak about your problems. Uh, He won't go easily if you speak about your problems, no matter how much you fasted, because you're not resisting the devil so that he may flee. So you need to be in the kingdom of light, okay? (laughs) It is a challenge for many people. I understand there's pain, there's sickness, but understand what the word is saying. It's giving you a key to receive. So it's not all up to us, friends. There's a great part that you have to do in receiving healing, and the Lord is looking for your heart. He's looking to see the way you treat others or the way you speak to others. It's very important God is interested in what you say because he said you will have what you say, what you believe in your heart and confess. That profession of faith will maintain your healing in him. So as we know, it's settled in heaven, friends, but we need to do our part. Um, You know, just an example, just the other day, um, somebody from overseas had uh, asked if they could get an anointed prayer cloth but, you know, this lady had come to me and said, you know, this, the attitude of this person is extremely rude, okay? And, uh, you know, when we read the email, we, we just thought that perhaps it's not a good thing for them to get the cross 
if they're coming with a heart like that. Only faith pleases God. And faith works through love. Okay. So, you know, for some, uh, you know, I'm not surprised why some don't receive because of the heart that they come in. You know, friends, it's very important. You know, you might be thinking, well, how can cancer have anything to do with the heart? How can fear have anything to do with the heart? But it has everything to do with the heart. Healing begins in the heart. Really, it's very important to realize that. If you catch that revelation, oh, my word, the anointing is just going to flow. Um, because it flows through love, friends. Um, you know, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything but faith works through love. No matter who you are, friends, if you have faith, you know, but you don't have love, you know, you're like a, a clanging bell. You cannot minister to people without love. Love is the most important key, and it begins in the heart. So, hallelujah, you know. Above all, the heart matters to God. Praise the Lord. And the same is true with impartation. Uh, many are looking for the power. I want the power. But there's no love. There's no prayer life. There's no time in the Word. Because I can't give you any of those things. Those things come through Christ. All we can do is lay hands upon you, as the Word says in Timothy, um, you know, to impart the spiritual gifts but the Lord is the one, is the maker of all. He's the one who, who imparts the, um, the blessing, and he is the one who gives us the healing. That's why it's so important that we rid ourselves today. Rid yourselves of those things that do not glorify the Lord. So faith is very important in receiving. In fact, one of my favorite scriptures is Mark 11, 24 to 25, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. So when you pray, you believe. You don't look to the right. You don't look to the left. You know that it's settled in heaven. No matter what's happening in the natural, friends, it is important that we realize that. Um, and then it goes on to say, and many try to cut this verse out. But it says, now he has given you a key. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So perhaps there's a mother-in-law or a colleague or somebody out there that you need to release, friends, Release them. Perhaps what they did was not right. Hallelujah. Forgive. Forgive. The devil cannot work in peace. When you forgive somebody, and this is how we operate as a ministry too, the name callings and all these things that come through, uh, the odd comments that would come through on YouTube as well, and I would just put my hand over the comment and say, Lord, I forgive them. Bless them. And amazingly so, I'd get an email back. I want to thank you for the wonderful work that you're doing from the same person. Why? Because the devil is standing there saying, why aren't you retaliating? Come on, Val, retaliate. And I say, no, I don't operate in your realm Oh, no, 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 no. I don't take that base, friends. So when people are persecuting you and people are, are giving you a really hard time, bless them. You will find all of a sudden things will change for you. And that's not even because you've had a hands laid upon you. It's because you've just released them. Release that person and you will see such a change happen so um, just take down that scripture. It's important because we want to release everything, friends, in our hearts today. 
So when we apply the word of God in our hearts, we're going to just see such an amazing change because he's now watching over his word to perform it. And he's saying, look at my boy, look at my girl. Look at them now. They're blessing. They're not shouting back anymore. Hallelujah. And then you'll begin, because he commands the blessings when we are in unity, okay, with his word. So that's so exciting, you know. So when somebody curses you at work or wherever you, you know, minister or if you're a minister, just learn to bless them. You don't even have to speak it back to them. Just in your heart say, Lord, I bless them, you know. Or Lord, forgive me, you know. We must do that too. We need to be forgiven, and they need to be forgiven too. Forgiveness all around, okay, because nobody is perfect, okay. So we don't repudiate our healing with a negative word either. When you've been prayed for today, just, you know, believe and thank the Lord that you have received it. Don't go and say, I don't think I received. Please never say that after you have been prayed for, because you don't understand faith, okay? So often we have people who want to come up after the service and say, but, you know, like for the third time now I'm praying for them, and I'm just wondering if they're going to receive it and just speak the word of faith. So um, it's really up to you how you receive it, and God is just looking to our hearts and uh, we need to resist the devil by speaking those words of healing, the confessions of faith. And uh, God is always faithful to his word. He cannot go against his word. He desires above all things that you prosper and be in good health. That is his desire for you. If you say, but well, I don't know what God's will is for my healing, friend, you need to read the word. That's what the word says. By his stripes, you were healed. You are healed. It's already done. It's already settled in heaven. You are anointed. You are blessed. You are loved. You are loved more, I mean, sure, you know, by an amazing God uh, who, if you were the only one here, you know, on this planet, he would have come down and died just to save you. That is how much love he has for us. I also believe it's important that we re learn to receive his love, friends, uh, so that you don't get depressed or sad when somebody speaks against you, but that you learn to be strong in the spirit and that you learn to bless. Okay, so just speak the word of faith, faith confessions over your life. And this is, it's really great to get hold of that book and those CDs, uh, many, we've had many testimonies from those CDs. People are really, they just put in their car and listen to the CD. And uh, it's really great to understand, um, you know, because sometimes you're wondering, why, why am I coming up all the time? You know, yet there's a root cause there and people get offended when I speak the root cause to them. So often I don't really, you know, perhaps I should. But the spirit of offense is very rife. And uh, so it's important, friends, to just get rid of those grudges today. And if somebody does have a word for you, you know, uh, in love and in faith, take it, you know, take it and receive it. So, you know, we really maintain our healing and our relationship with Jesus by our profession of faith. Let me say that again. <laughs> we maintain our healing and our relationship with Jesus by our profession of faith because Christ and his word are one. Okay, so the more we in the word, the more we declaring the word, you know, I mean, this is such awesome grounding, you know, for you, if you would just take it in your heart. God can use anyone, anyone. He is not limited. He is not limited in any way to one or two or three people. He really wants to work in and through each and every one of us, every one of us. You know, the glory of this present house is going to be greater. 
what the Lord is doing now in the body of Christ is going to be greater. That's why the attacks on the church, you can expect it to be even more. But the gates of Hades will never prevail. It cannot prevail against the church of God. Uh, Nobody can come against Jesus, friends. It's just so amazing. If you speak out the name of Jesus in faith, you will see wonderful miracles take place. But you've got to be walking with the Lord because anybody can shout Jesus and not be grounded in him. You want to be grounded in his word. You want to have his word in your heart so that you are confessing it all the time, no matter what is happening. So God bless you, friends. I know it's hot today. I'm not going to keep you for much longer. But thank you for, for listening to my message today. Praise the Lord.